Hey everyone, thanks for joining me up to and Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Dice Hospital. This is a game from Alley Cad Games. It is a 1-4 to four player game that takes roughly 30-45 to 45 minutes to play, and is a competitive game, so each player is going to be competing against the other players to get the most points and be the overall winner at the end of the game. Please also make sure that you have Klingon text turned on, and if you do, you'll have a little text at the bottom of the screen here. This way I can update you during the video and let you know if there's any rules corrections or anything else that I need to point out after the video is produced. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel as it really makes a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and be able to produce these videos. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. There are four different decks included in the game. The first one we have are the Specialists, which this deck is going to contain four different color Specialists, green, yellow, red, and blue. And each time you gain a Specialist, you also receive a Meeple of that Specialist color, and then during your turn you can spend that Meeple placing it somewhere in the hospital, and then if it matches the color of the Specialist, then you'll gain the benefits of that Specialist. And as you can see, each Specialist's abilities are a little bit different. Then we also are going to have hospital administrators and each player is going to receive one of these at the beginning of the game and each one of them is going to provide some sort of condition or effect for that player, some benefit. For example, with this one here, it's going to stop one of your red neglected patients from deteriorating this round. And I'll cover these more during the game. The other two decks of cards are optional. The first one here we have is the medical report cards and these are only going to be used in solo mode when you play that. Each of these is going to provide conditions for discharged patients and a way to get victory points. Then we have the event cards, and again, these are optional and you can include these in your game. In the beginning of each round, you're going to draw a new one and resolve its effect. Some of these will be positive and some of them will be negative. Throughout the game, the players are going to be acquiring different department tiles, and there's going to be four different colors of these, gray, yellow, red, and green. Each of these tiles represents a different department and will have the department's name on the top of the tile and then a special effect or condition for the players to heal their patients. Each of these tiles will have that information outlined on the back of the rulebook and there's also going to be a quick reference card that each player will receive as well that will help with that. For example, with cardiology here, you can heal three red patients in sequential order or consecutive order, meaning that one patient could be a two, three, or four, or a four, five, six, but they have to be in the same order. Over here with the ears, nose, and throat, this one you can heal one green patient three levels, and with this one you can heal three yellow patients as long as they're all the same number. Each player is also going to receive an identical hospital board with the same breakdown of units. At the bottom of the board are going to be their four different wards where they'll be placing new patients and patients that they're treating in there. They will go into the top three sections of each ward and you can place them in there however you want to, organizing them based on color or any other combination you want. As you treat patients, they'll move down into one of the three checked areas, meaning that you have treated them and they will not deteriorate at the end of the round. Now you also have eight different units at the top here and each player will start with three nurses that you can use by placing them in these different units to activate them. Each unit can only be used once per turn and by placing a nurse in there you will activate that unit resolving its effect. So for example with the critical care unit you're going to increase one red patient by one level so you could bump this patient up to a seven causing them to be discharged and you'll receive victory points for that or you can move this patient up to six and then again you would move them down to the treated area as you have treated them. You can use each one of these units one time per turn. You can never put more than one nurse in each unit and if for example a patient deteriorates down below one then they will go to the morgue and you'll place a morgue tag in there that will count as negative points at the end of the game. Now throughout the game you'll also receive specialists that you'll be able to use in these units and you'll receive additional units as you acquire those as well. They'll be attached to different areas around the board and however you want to organize them. For board setup go ahead and place the scoreboard out in the middle of the table and then each player will also gain a hospital board. From there you're going to choose the starting player and the easiest way I found to do this is to take a number of white nurses and then add one colored nurse, mix them up based on the number of players and have each player draw one. The player that draws the colored nurse will be the starting player. That player is going to receive the starting player token so for this game we're going to go ahead and give it to our player here. 
Then each player is going to choose a colored syringe that they want to be for their color, and they will gain one of those syringes, and the other one will go on the score track. You can also place the dial on the score track to track the number of rounds, and place it so that the number one round is showing. Each player is also going to receive three white nurses that they're going to place in their nurse station. Then you can shuffle up and place out the department tiles, and then based on the number of players, you'll reveal a number of those. With us playing a three-player game, we will reveal two of these. Do the same thing with the specialists, shuffle them up and place them out, and then again draw a number of them based on the number of players, as shown on the chart. So with us playing a three-player game, we'll reveal two. Next, place out a number of ambulances based on the number of players plus one, and place them out on their side that does not have the numbered icons on them. So with us playing a three-player game, we'll place out four ambulances, and the final ambulance will be returned to the game box as you won't use it for this game. Next, go ahead and give each player a reference guide, which will have the turn sequence and scoring, and a quick reference for all the different icons in the game. Then place out all the rest of the tokens you'll be using for the game. For this video, I'll be using a Crystal Fortress pod set as well. If you'd like to know more information, there'll be a link in the description below to their website. Next, deal each player two specialists, and then from there, each player is going to choose one of those specialists to have. Any other cards will be returned to the game box. The next step is to set the dice bag. So again, based on the number of players, as you can see on this chart, you'll include that number of dice. So in a four player game, you're gonna use all 63 dice. In a three player game, you'll remove three dice of each color from the bag. And in a two player game, you'll remove six dice of each color from the bag. Then you can go ahead and give the bag to the starting player. And that player is going to draw three dice from the bag. From there, that player is going to set those dice to numbers 3, 4, and 5 in any order they want. So our player here will go ahead and do this. And then that player is going to place these dice out on their game board in one of the wards with the down arrows on those spots. So in one of the three top spots. And you can do this in any manner you want. You can separate them. You can place them however you want. From there, he'll pass the dice bag to the next player to do the same thing. Once all players are done setting their dice, they're ready to move into the game. Now, if you've chosen to use the event cards, go ahead and shuffle those up and also place that those out in the middle of the table. Dice Hospital is played over a series of eight rounds, and during each round it is broken down into six phases, which are the patient intake, hospital improvement, hospital activation, neglected patients, discharged patients, and finally shift change. At the end of the eighth round, you'll move into a final scoring step, and at the end of that, the player that has the most points will be the overall winner of the game. The first phase in each round is the patient intake phase. During this phase, the player that has the first player marker will draw a number of dice from the bag based on the number of ambulances that are in play. With us playing a three player game, there are four ambulances, so we'll draw a total of 12 dice from the bag. There's four. Then we'll go ahead and roll these dice. Any ones or sixes will be re-rolled until there are none of those. So we'll go ahead and re-roll these, and then we're good. And then our players will organize the dice based on the numbers, and then they will be placed in the ambulances, starting with the lowest number on top and working your way through. So for example, with our twos, they'll go in the first ambulance, and if there are more dice of one particular number, then the player to the first player's right will choose the order in which they go into the ambulance. For example, with us having four twos, our, we would place three of those twos in there, in that ambulance, and the next one would go in the following ambulance. But the player to our right is going to choose which colored numbers are going to go in here. So we could do one of each, or we could have two yellows and the red will be in there. Again, it'll be up to that player. Then we'll continue on, and again, we have three threes, so only two are going to go in there. So our player over there is going to choose to have the two yellow threes go in there. And then these will go here, and these will go here. From there, again, starting with the first player and proceeding in a clockwise manner, each player is going to choose one of the ambulances to come to their hospital. The first player can never choose the number one ambulance. So our player is going to go ahead and take the number three ambulance. And we'll place that in front of our section. Then moving on, our next player over here is going to choose. So he will take this ambulance here. And our last player is going to go ahead and go easy and take this one. 
any dice that are remaining on the last ambulance will return to the bag and that ambulance will stay in that spot. The player that took the lowest ambulance will become the new starting player or first player and will also receive a blood bag. Finally, each player is going to take the dice off of their ambulance, not changing their numbers and placing them in their untreated section on their wards. Now, each player's hospital can hold a maximum of 12 patients at any time. So if a player has to place more patients in there than they have spaces for, then they will have to choose one or more patients that they will place in the mortuary that will kill that patient and they will receive a toe tag in the mortuary that will count as a negative to them at the end of the game. Any dice that are going to the mortuary will be returned to the bag as well. And again, you can place these any way you want to on the top sections of each ward. So you can spread them out, break them into their individual colors, however you want to do it. Once all the players are done with that, we're ready to move on to the next phase. The second phase in the round is the hospital improvement phase. And during this phase, starting with the player that has the lowest numbered ambulance and proceeding up from there, each player is going to get to select one hospital improvement, which is either going to be a department or a specialist. So let's go ahead and start with our player here. He has the lowest numbered ambulance, so he gets to choose either a specialist or a department. So he is going to go ahead and take, he's going to go ahead and take a department as he has a lot of yellow, so this will help. Anytime you take a department, you will attach it to anywhere on your hospital board. So we'll go ahead and put it there. Now any selection that is taken will not be replenished until the end of the round. So then moving on to the player that has the next lowest ambulance, our player in the middle will go. And that player is going to go ahead and select the cardiologist. Anytime a player selects a specialist, they're going to gain a meeple of that color as well. And it always will be stored on the specialist's card when not in use. Finally, our player at the end here has the highest numbered ambulance, so he'll be the last to select. And so that player is going to take the paramedic. Again, that player will gain a meeple of that color. Now after every player has made their selection, each player may return one improvement, including the one they just took, to the bottom of the appropriate stack, and then they will gain one blood token for that. Only one improvement can be discarded per player per round in this way. So our players could choose to return one of their improvements to gain a blood token. The third phase in the round is the hospital activation phase, and during this phase, each player is going to activate their hospital to heal and discharge their patients. Now the first couple games you play, you can choose to do this each individually, letting each player go so you can see how each player handles their hospital. But in later games, you can also choose to do this all simultaneously as there won't be any player interaction during this phase, so there is no need to take turns with this. You can all activate your hospitals and resolve your effects each simultaneously. Or you can continue playing however you want to. From there, each player is going to spend their nurses and specialists, placing them into different departments to heal their patients during their turn. Each nurse and specialist can only be used one time during their turn, and each department can only be used one time as well. Each nurse and specialist can be placed in any department. The color is not important. So now let's take a look at a couple examples of this. So let's go ahead and start by placing our cardi cardiologist into the imaging department. With this one, it is going to allow us to improve one patient that is a number three or four by one level. So let's go ahead and take our patient here and upgrade him to level five. And with that, with a cardiologist, he has an optional rule that if he increases a red patient, he also gets to increase another patient of any color of the same value one level. So with the red number, it, or red patient, he started out as a four, so we can improve one of the other fours that we have of a green patient, so we'll bump one of them up. Then each patient that is treated will move down from the ward on their untreated side to their treated side, which is the little check directly underneath that. Now each patient can be healed multiple times, so even our treated patients can be healed again. So for example, we could place a nurse up here and heal our red patient one point. We, again, we could choose the red patient here or choose one of the other red patients to treat them. So let's go ahead and say, for example, we'll treat this patient and move him up to a four. Then we'll go ahead and take our another nurse and place her in the pharmacy, increasing one of our green patients. So we'll go ahead and bump our other patient here to a four, and then he is treated as well. And then we have our final nurse here. So let's go ahead and go to the clinic, increasing one of our number five or sixes up one level. 
So again, we could choose our green one here, our red one here, or our red one there. So let's go ahead and treat that one and move him down. Now at this point, we are out of patients or nurses and specialists. The one other thing that I want to cover, for example, is with our tiles here with anesthesia. It, you have to be able to use all the effects of a tile in order to take advantage of that tile. So for example, with anesthesia, we, must, we can increase three red patients, one level, that are all equal numbers. So for example, if this patient here was a five, we could not use those two patients as we need three red patients to do that. So all three of our red patients have to be the same number. And the last thing is when a patient is bumped up to seven or higher, they are immediately discharged and placed in the discharge section. And again, a specialist can be placed in a different colored section. So our cardiologist could be placed in oncology to increase a yellow, but then his optional bonus effect would not be triggered as he needs to heal a red patient to do that. The one other important thing I want to cover during this phase are the blood bag tokens. So with these, they have multiple uses. Each time you spend one of these, you can heal one patient one level. You can also choose to change that patient's color to any color you want to right before you're going to do a healing effect on that patient. And if you do that, so let's go ahead and say that we spend a blood token to change this patient to a red patient. In order to do that, again, you'll place that, that dye in the color department just as a reminder so you know that that dye is a red dye, and then you can activate a department to heal that patient. So for example, if we hadn't placed our nurse here yet, we could place our nurse here to activate this, and now this patient or this patient here is a red patient, so now we can bump it up to a five, healing at one level as a red patient. Finally, any of the blood bags you have remaining at the end of the game are going to give you one bonus point. The fourth phase in the round is neglected patients. So once all the players have completed their activations on their hospitals, then each player is going to go through their hospital and check on the top row of the ward for any untreated patients. From there, each patient that has not been treated will be reduced one level due to neglect. Now you're also going to want to check any of your hospital administrators as some of them will have effects that will reduce that, such as our player over here has a hospital administrator that will stop one yellow patient from degrading. So our patient over here that has been neglected will not drop due to our administrator. Our other patient over here will, so she'll drop to, to four. Now any patient that drops down to zero will be a fatality and will be removed or moved to the mortuary and re the die will be returned to the game bag and a player will gain a fatality token that will be placed in the mortuary which will count as negative points at the end of the game. So then our final player over here had a rough go of things. He will reduce one patient down to a four and these two threes will be reduced down to twos. The fifth phase in the round is discharged patients. During this phase, each player is going to check their discard section, and based on the number of dice or patients that have been discharged, they're going to receive a number of victory points based on their quick reference card, as you can see here. So with our player over here, he was the only one that was able to discharge a patient this round, and with one patient, he's going to receive one point, and he is the red player, so he'll move his marker up to the one space. Any discharged patient's dice will be returned to the game bag as well. The one other important thing is if a player is able to discharge all of the patients and all of their wards are clear, they'll also receive an additional five bonus points. The final phase in a round is the shift change phase. And if this is the end of the eighth round, then this phase is going to be skipped. During this phase, the players are going to resolve a number of steps. So first, all players are going to move all of their nurses and specialists back to their starting positions. So the nurses will go back to the nurse's station, and each specialist meeple will be placed back on their specialist card. Each player is also going to return all of their treated patients to their untreated sections on the wards. Each player will return their ambulance to the center of the board. And then finally, the first player is going to rotate the round tracker one space forward. He'll return any unused departments or specialists to the bottom of their respective stacks and reveal new specialists and departments based on the number of players. So going with three players, we'll reveal two of each of these. From there, you're ready to begin a new round. And the last thing I want to cover is endgame scoring. So I only adjusted the one player's board to show you how this works, but each player will resolve this for their own steps.
So each player is going to receive a number of bonus points based on the number of blood tokens that they have, with each blood token counting as one extra point. So our blue player will receive two additional bonus points for that. And then each player is also going to receive negative points based on how many of their toe tags that they have in their mortuary. So our player here has two, and each toe tag is going to be reducing that by two points. So that will drop him back down to 43. At that point, the player that has the most points will be the winner. If there's a tied, then the tied player with the fewest patients remaining in their hospital is declared the winner. And if there's still a tied, then the tied player with the highest total value of all patients, adding up all the pips on all remaining dice, is declared the winner. If for some reason there's still a tie, then you'll share that victory. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. If you found this video helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference. It helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.